Hello chess friends and welcome to Azar's Chess Channel and welcome to my best chess games of all time series. So in this series we follow the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today we will see a very very nice game played by the legendary Boris Paski. Boris Paski, the former world champion, lost then the title against Bobby Fischer but uh, he was really really a strong grandmaster, he was uh, great tactically prepared, he had also a very very nice positional understanding that's why he was really really one of the best uh, chess players in, in history. So today I wanted to show you uh, his immortal game against Bent Larsen uh, in th from 1970. Uh, Bent Larsen also a uh, very well respected uh, grandmaster from the last century. But uh, Bent Larsen was also cru uh, was crushed by Bobby Fischer once uh, in in their match game he was crushed 6 to 0. So, as said, he was maybe a strong player, but uh, he was not this uh, top, top, top grandmaster level. That's why you see now what Boris Paski did to him in, in their match, uh, because he, it was really, really a great, great tactical motive uh, with some rook sacrifices, pawn, bra pawn breakthroughs and many of this uh, beautiful chess elements that can happen in a chess game. And it was really, really something else, because you see, it was sort of a, well, uh, computer chess game it was uh, such such a precise uh, precise attack by by Boris Paski and he deserves deserves all of the respect of course in this chess history so let's see now the game uh, b3 played by Bent Larsen uh, it's the so-called Nimzo Larsen attack so this is his opening line uh, his opening preparation so basically Boris Paski crushed uh, Bent Larsen in his own opening here after b3, uh, Boris Paski goes into this common e5 line. Uh, if you try something like d5, uh, probably white will go bishop on b2, then f4. Uh, try to uh, have a nice control of the center e5, uh, e5 square, then of course support it with knight on f3. So Boris Paski goes into this line. Um, into this modern variation against this Larsen attack. Here bishop on b2 was played and now knight on c6. Here c4 uh, gaining some space on the queen side, but now knight on f6, and now comes uh, knight on uh, knight on f3. This is a provocative move, but I think it's already sort of a mistake because uh, here after e4, uh, knight on d4 was played by uh, Bent Larsen. We have now this strategical element of uh, grabbing the space, and now you see uh, Boris Paski managed to fix this pawn on e4, and this is now really, really annoying pawn to handle because in order to break this uh, huge space advantage, you have to weaken much more, uh, much more your pawn structure with moves as d3 or f3. F3, of course, is the worst you can do because there are always these tactical threats with queen on queen on h4. So that's why here bishop on c5 uh, by Spassky, challenging uh, uh, immediately this uh, knight on d4 uh, that Bent Larsen has played. So now knight on c6 and we have now d takes c6. And okay, we have uh, double pawns, but uh, you see white will have many, many troubles in order to develop uh, fast here, because this bishop has a huge activity, uh, this bishop is also on a very powerful diagonal, this knight is on a natural square, so basically one, two, and then three more moves uh, far away from fully development, so fast development here by Boris Paski. Uh, of course, bishop uh, on f6 is... Uh, uh, not good because uh, queen on f6 and then we have then you have dark dark square problem so uh here e3 played by uh, uh bent larsen if you try something like g3 here this is you see how bad the setup is by bent larsen so far g3 in order maybe to attack this pawn on on e4 well it leads to a very very complex but a uh, good line for 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 black because then you have immediately h4 uh, h5 this uh, flank attack uh, in order to uh, weaken somehow somehow the pawn structure around white's king if you try bishop on g2 then h4 and after knight on c3 we can play bishop on f5 you see now white uh, has troubles in order to castle if uh, you cannot of course play uh, queen on c2 then you get uh, uh, some dis discovered attack possibilities by the bishop 
so this queen is a little bit stuck there the queen doesn't have breathing space at all uh, so in order to castle long you need many many moves but if you castle um, kingside here you see that uh, white uh, black has already prepared uh, his flank attack then we can try something like queen on d7 and going into this uh, common uh, ideas of um, of these attacks against the fianchetto bishop with bishop on h3 and try then to checkmate on the h file so you see it's really hard uh, for white in these positions to castle um, this uh, black king in the center is still not endangered because we have uh, uh, we have a perfect defense because this is now as i said our main advantage in the game so that's why here e3 was played uh, by uh, by Bent Larsen and now Bishop on f5 and Queen on c2. Still, we are uh, controlling this uh, e4 e4 pawn. It's our main advantage, so we are not allowing our opponent to take this pawn. If we lose this, lose this pawn e4, it will be probably a bad position for Black. With the space advantage on the fourth rank, it's of course an advantage for for Black here. So Queen on e7, supporting even more uh, this very powerful pawn. Bishop on e2 and now. Uh, queen uh, queenside castling here by Bob Boris Paske and you see now the perfect coordination by black pieces we have finished our development we have uh, uh, this, uh, semi open file on the D file here we have the very powerful bishop pair the knight is still flexible the queen is uh, of course aiming here um, indirectly on the king still we have possibilities to play something like queen on h4 in order to maybe attack this very weak f f2 pawn and we have we have also possibilities to place our rook on the e file so this is very very good a very good setup here by boris Paski. f4 uh, of course uh, you cannot take because the uh, the bishop is hanging but uh, even if we can grab this um, this pawn uh, bishop on e2 still uh, we as i said we want to hang on to our uh, space advantage so this pawn is uh, again uh, something unbreakable here for white so knight on g4 was played uh, this is now a very tricky move if you try something like bishop on g7 well believe me or not it's game over because after maybe something like rook on g8 uh, bishop on b2 if you get back then knight on e3 very very powerful after d takes e3 we have queen on uh, queen on h4 uh, with a very very annoying check after g3 well then you have rook takes on g3 uh, h takes g3 and now queen takes on g3 where to go with the king you see you have only one square is the square f1 and now after bishop on e3 you have to protect somehow because there were checkmate threats uh, here on f2 so here rook on d1 can be played deflecting the queen from the uh, from the second rank after king on e2 here bishop on g4 and it's game over so you see tricky tricky move here this um, knight on g4 so that's why here g3 was played by bent larsen closing the position on dark squares but it's still uh, a weak position now around white's king uh, you see white still has the uh, developing problems that's why here again boris paski goes into this flank attack and now bent larsen uh tried to move h3 and now it's really a critical moment of the game most of us would tr probably try something like knight on f3 and uh, then uh, bent larsen can go maybe knight on c3 and castle queenside here but not boris paski really uh, he was as uh, as i said one of the best chess players in history he played now a great great tactical motif he plays the move h4 and sacrificing the knight we have now each uh, h takes g4 we have h takes g3 so we have now a very very uh, uh, annoying attack because you see black has the rook connection uh, white doesn't have the rook connection so this rook is out of game this knight is so far out of game the coordination of uh, black pieces is too much to handle here here it's already a losing evaluation for white so rook on g1 was played trying to hang on uh, onto the defense we're trying to get as much uh, as possible of these pieces around white's king and you can pause the video and try to find now the best move for for black it was really an unbelievable move, unbelievable move uh, something else in chess i think and it's the move rook on h1 sacrificing the rook here rook takes on h1 was played but now g3 and you see rook on f1 was played if you try something like 
rook on uh, rook on uh, g1 then you have again this very annoying check queen on h4 uh, king on d1 has to be played but now uh, queen on h1 and uh, you have to maybe bring the queen uh, into the game but now first check check uh, here we can take the queen on c1 king takes and uh, here we can go uh, simple g1 and go to promotion here so that's why rook on f1 was played you see uh, first giving up the rook and then we can take the rook but now first uh, this queen on h4 you see the king stayed in the center too uh, uh, too long in the game and now uh, king on d1 had to be played and now g takes f1 and in this position in this position uh, bent larsen resigned let's see the possible continuation if you take bishop takes on f1 then we have bishop on uh, g uh, g4 with a very annoying check here you have to move the queen on c1 but now Queen on e1, queen on d1, and here queen takes on d1, checkmate. So, great game. Let's go back to this critical moment. This is this is this move, uh, very very annoying. Uh, here rook on h1, sacrificing the rook just in order uh, to have this pawn uh, mobile here. It's really one of the best pawns that I've seen in some chess games in history. I think this is very very tricky stuff that Boris Paski has prepared here and Ben Larsen lost and of course resigned the game okay uh, I hope you enjoyed this game I enjoyed it a lot uh, it was really something else uh, meanwhile you can watch my other uh, best chess games of all times with some other Mikhail Tal, Boris uh, Spassky, Bobby Fischer, Gary Kasparov chess games and you can also watch my commented chess games played by computers if you want to see the stop engines playing like Lila C0, Stockfish and many many more. And you can also subscribe to my channel. Thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course.